The discord and division in our society must be healed. We must heal it quickly. As Americans, we are bound together by a single fate and a shared destiny. We rise together or we fall apart. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. Former President Donald Trump accepting the Republican Party nomination in Milwaukee just five days after surviving an assassin's bullet in Pennsylvania. The amazing thing is that prior to the shot, if I had not moved my head at that very last instant, the assassin's bullet would have perfectly hit its mark, and I would not be here tonight. We would not be together. In uncharacteristically subdued terms, the former president professed his desire to unify the nation before returning to core proposals like slamming the door on illegal immigration, implementing a mass deportation program, ending Russia's war on Ukraine, shackling inflation, and cutting taxes. Panel, I winced, as I expect you did, when the former president claimed that he nearly finished the border wall and was victimized by a stolen election. I'm gonna start with you, Charles Blaine. Uh, yeah, just generally speaking, I mean, I think it's, we saw a different Trump definitely after the assassination attempt, and I think that anybody who's go, who goes through something like that is going to come out different, and I think you saw some of that in the speech, but I do want to take a second to talk about J.D. Vance, because I thought his speech was interesting for two reasons, well, for a number of reasons, but two reasons that stood out in particular was um, something we saw that Republicans don't often do, and I think it's because he's a millennial and what he's going through with a young family and talked about affordability and the need for people to be able to buy homes and the cost of rent. I think that was something incredibly important important that resonates with a lot of folks. And I think the other thing he talked about was the, the cost of addiction. I mean, he had his mother stand up and re referenced her challenges with addiction and how people are hollowing out in the Rust Belt because of overdoses, which is something that, you know, from New Jersey, I my friends text me all the time about people who've done that. And so I think those two things really resonated, and we saw that because this is a new generation of leadership that's coming in. Holly, 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, I thought the president's, uh, our former president's speech in the beginning was very good, and it appealed to those independent voters that he really needs to win this election. A lot of people predicted after the assassination attempt that, you know, it was in the books uh, that he would win, certainly. But a lot can happen over the next three months, and uh, the Republicans should not take those votes for granted. They still have a tough slog, and, uh, you know, anything can happen, and we still don't know necessarily who the Democrats' nominee will be. Bill and I had a conversation about uh, near-death experiences and whether they can create a sense of epiphany. I mean, I thought that the tone he took in the first part was extremely effective uh, thoughts. Yeah, if he'd have stopped there, it'd been great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Trump obviously suffers from a narcissistic you know, uh, condition, and, and narcissists have a hard time empathizing. And what the research shows is that when a narcissist goes through a, um, a life-threatening experience, it typically gives them a more empathetic <coughs> Uh, outlook on life. Unfortunately, the research seems to indicate it's not very long lasting, but I think you're going to see at least some change in him as a result of that. Yeah, I almost got attacked by a pit bull during the hurricane, and I thought I was playing with house money all week. <laughs> yeah, I was very <laughs> grateful. <laughs> Paul, your thoughts about the president's acceptance speech? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how much people are going to pay attention to something. We're not talking about a person who doesn't have a record as a sitting president for four years. Mm. Uh, so the question has to be, do voters believe what he said during a speech that was 90 minutes, or are they going to think back to the four years and the policies that they created? And, and I think most people are pretty much dug in right now. There's going to be, what, 100,000, 200,000 votes over seven states that are going to decide that election. Um, that's really where the question lies. All right, uh, Sue, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you, uh, when you have a side-by-side -side comparison, if you're Joe Biden, what do you what do you uh, say? Hey, this is what I brought to the table compared to what he brought to the table. You think? Well, I mean, there's a, there's a comparison, and look, you know, um, uh, acceptance speeches don't win elections. People will forget that. Other than it was long going on, I think it is going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, the Democrats and with Biden, and if indeed he will be the nominee and what plays out there. And until uh, we find out what happens there, it's really hard to say. 
what happens moving forward. Holly, uh, thoughts on J.D. Vance real quick? Oh, uh, very interesting, and I agree with what Charles said. It's, you know, a broad appeal, especially to people who are struggling with affordability. Um, I think that some of the policy positions Vance is presenting for the Republican Party are interesting. They're different from the past. Uh, there's more of a pro-union uh, embracement and some different um, uh, monetary policy that uh, indicates there's a shift going on within the party. Okay.